Um, okay, uh, today I'm going to talk about um, my last year's project. Uh, it's about the study of the historical transportation networks in the Iberian Peninsula. The idea of this project, uh, which uh, it's called Mercatore, is to quant try to quantify um, the transport, uh, try to quantify the transport infrastructures. Uh, the movement of, uh, of products uh, within one, one, one territory. Um, I had the idea to try to, com to, try to do a, a diachronical analysis uh, in the Iberian Peninsula from the Roman times through the 19th century to try to find new, uh, some differences or similarities between projects, uh, between periods, because uh, you know that sometimes uh, we say that, uh, uh, at, at least for Spain, um, some of the main roads uh, from the Roman times has, has been maintained over the years. So the idea was to try to find which similarities and which differences have been uh, developed in the infrastructure uh, networks over those years. Why I was interested in, infra in infrastructures? Um, the main idea was that um, we know that from these, uh, these roads or all of these transport infrastructures, there were uh, different elements of the history of history or uh, of, of the organization of a uh, territory, like obviously economy. We know that uh, in all of these roads, a lot of products were moved. Some uh, some territories uh, could uh, export all of their products and uh, or could import what they needed. At the same time, we understand that the from we know that uh, at least from Roman times, the construction of new infrastructures are always related. Uh, with some uh, or territorial organization. Uh, it, they are always uh, an element of uh, political propaganda uh, to, show, uh, to show to the new conquered territories the, the benefits from being under, under the rules of, of Roman because they build new roads, they build bridges, so they uh, uh, allow more communication uh, to all of these territories. And also because there is a, a, a social element like the movement of people and ideas within these uh, this networks. So, and, and obviously, uh, why the Iberian Peninsula? I, I thought that uh, the territory of the Iberian Peninsula was a very interesting territory. Uh, first, because it's an almost closed uh, area. It means that when, we are, uh, when you are developing some kind of network analysis, it's very uh, benef beneficial to don't have neighbors on on the, uh, uh, the outside of your territory because you uh, can analyze it in, the, in, uh, in, in all of uh, its, its territory. Uh, I thought that it was a, a, an, affordable, an affordable size. Um, maybe it was one of the mistakes of my project because for one person uh, it's a little bit huge to do all of this research um, in, in only in two years and trying to digitize uh, the, the network, uh, the historical networks of this territory for uh, in different periods. Uh, at the same time, uh, we know that uh, the, chrono the chronology of the, the history of this territory is very interesting over the centuries because we have a uh, different patterns of governments uh, from Roman times when the metropolis is outside of uh, uh, it's outside <laughs> of this territory from the medieval times when we have and different different kingdoms and there is a, a very uh, conflictive movement. Then we have uh, the modern times with uh, the first centralism, um, uh, the, ce the first centralist uh, monarchies, and finally in the 19th century with the creation of the first the first uh, railway. So we have a lot of different um, moments in this in this territory that could show uh, some differences in, in the organization of this territory. And also because we have a lot of data of this territory, mostly for Roman times, but we know. Uh, a lot of cities, uh, population, we know a lot of information about the roads, uh, we, can, we have a lot of material to make then some kind of comparisons. So the first step, the first uh, thing that we, we have to do with this project was to uh, try to uh, compile all of the available information and digitize all of this. Uh, it was a very huge uh, very huge part of this uh, project. It took me more, m more than what I, that what I expected. Uh, I thought uh, I found some some issues with this because I, I found a lot of information from Roman times and from the 19th century, but uh, the modern times and the medieval era from the from the Iberian Peninsula is a very unknown um, 
moment for uh, to study so mostly the communications. The idea was to try to digitize everything in a GIS. Well, there are other captures. Uh, these uh, these are uh, the results of uh, of this of the networks of this project. Uh, I took uh, I made uh, four different time slices: uh, one from Roman times, one from medieval times, one from the 17th century, and one from the 19th century. Um, just to give an idea, uh, from from Roman times and medieval times, I visited over uh, 40,000 kilometers of roads. For the modern era and the 19th century, it was a little bit more, uh, around 70,000 and, 70, and 70, for each period, which gives an, a total of more than uh, 200,000 kilometers of digitized roads for all of these periods. <laughs> okay. Um, hey, how you broke the computer? I think so. <laughs> Sorry. Yes, totally your fault. Huh. <laughs> oh. I, I think. Can you do? Oh, you see? No. <laughs> you see? No. Okay. Yeah, and doesn't work anywhere. Could you check if there's anything flight to the computer? Yes, there is a hard drive. Unplug it. Yes? Yep. There's something wrong with the oh. USB drive. Oh. Yes. Oh. Maybe. Oh. Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. How many computing archaeologists? <laughs> <laughs> Just to give an idea of, of, of the density of the roads of this project, for Roman times, uh, this was uh, this is the, the, re the, main, the main network used in the Orbis project, which is a very interesting project. Um, this is what you can find online, online uh, related with the Roman roads of the Iberian Peninsula. And this is uh, the resulting ro uh, network of, uh, of this project. And it helps, uh, just a, a few comments that uh, uh, I'm developing a new project with uh, Tom Brugams and other colleagues uh, trying to create a new interface where people can download <laughs> Or where people can can find information and can download all of these uh, roads to, to use to for other projects, which is called itinerary. So the idea, this was the base of the project. Uh, the first step, which, uh, as I said, was to digitize everything, uh, all of these all of these uh, transport networks, uh, not only the roads but also the sea con the sea connections and the river, um, uh, the navigable ri rivers. rivers. Uh, but when we have uh, these this networks, the idea was uh, what, what kind of information can we extract from, from these digitized roads? The idea was to try to understand or try to, um, to develop different kinds of approaches. One of them was, uh, was to try to um, work with the connectivity of these, of these cities. The idea behind that was was uh, try to find uh, which uh, territories were uh, were mo were more well connected uh, and which places were more isolated in within this uh, this structure. The idea is uh, thinking uh, when Romans and when a government is, uh, spent money building new infrastructures and giving uh, more uh, connectivity to a place um, should be uh, for. For some import, for some uh, different and important reasons, the most important should be that this place should be an, a political, an economical, or a social uh, hub uh, for these uh, for these uh, governments. Um, to do that, uh, thinking that uh, thinking that uh, not all of the means of transport should uh, should take the same importance or should seem, should be as important as others. Uh, the idea was uh, to use uh, some weighted networks. Uh, uh, to do that, we give different weights to each mean of transport depending on which which uh, transport they re they reflect. Um, in Roman times, it was not the same to have a, a secondary road 
that to, uh, for a city it was not the same to be connected with a secondary road that had a, that has a, 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 a sea port or, or, or to be to have the opportunity to export products by river or by main roads. This is the the main base. We converted this in a in a network to be analyzed, and what, what we created was this kind of uh, of heat map maps. Uh, showing in blue, in deep blue, the, the best connected places and in red the most isolated places for Roman times in that case. The idea is what the, the idea is what we have that we can we can compare uh, this kind of information, this kind of connectivity uh, territories with other kind of information. For Roman times, for example, we can co we can mix uh, this information with uh, the most productive areas uh, of the Iberian Peninsula. In pink, uh, you, in, in purple, you see. Uh, all of the all of the uh, sites which uh, most produce uh, wine in green uh, we have uh, oil production and in in, in red there are uh, Roman mines. But we also can compare this kind of information with the size of the cities or the number of the con of, of the uh, um, con uh, concentration of cities. And we also can compare them with the political situation of each of these cities. Uh, here you can see in, in the big uh, squares uh, there are the provincial capitals and in red there are the conventus capitals, which were um, uh, small territories within these provinces. With this, for example, we can show or we can analyze uh, the relationship between the political status of, of the cities uh, in one period well, and the and, and, the con and the level of connectivity. We did the same with other periods. This is for uh, from medieval times. At the beginning, it looks uh, similar, but when we compare, uh, when when you compare uh, these these connectivity maps, you can see uh, the territories <coughs> in red, which means that some, uh, there are territories that uh, lose uh, connectivity, and in and in blue territories that uh, increase their connectivity between Roman times and the medieval times. You can see here, for example, in the north, uh, the growing up of the Camino de Santiago, which, which means at the same time that the loss of connectivity of, of the roads of the, south, of the south. Uh, a very interesting hub is here in, uh, in around Merida. Merida was a, a provincial capital in Roman times, which means that uh, it was a very connected territory, but uh, from the medieval times, it's a territory that loses a lot of connectivity because uh, they don't have any political significance. Um, this is the same, but from uh, between medieval times and modern times, we can see here uh, the growth uh, of connectivity in, in all of the, the territories of Hispanics, for example, with the connection between Spain and and South America, uh, the North also because we have uh, the connections, uh, the connections between the production of wheel and the export, the, the exportation to the North. And this is uh, the map from, from the 19th century, and it's interesting to see the effect of the connectivity of the of the railway in that in, in, at the half of the century. It's interesting to see how uh, all of these models are uh, of con of, of territorial organization are changing over the centuries. And it's also interesting to compare here uh, the same relationship between uh, political and, and political status of, of cities and its connectivity and how the models change over the time. This is from Roman and, and the 19th century. This is from the modern, uh, from modern era and which is interesting more is from, from medieval times Maybe because uh, this uh, this uh, constant evolution of this political evolution of these uh, centuries of these years uh, that make that a, a, a different model, where the the most important city or the most political important cities were not not were always the the most connected uh, cities. Uh, talking about accessibility. Um, I, but as you can, as you have seen here, um, always or in, in each period, the biggest cities were always were always well connected. 
cities with political roles also were always well connected, but there are differences between uh, different periods. And also, uh, it's interesting to relate uh, how, mo how the connections uh, uh, between infrastructures and, and most productive areas. Uh, it's interesting, at least for Roman times, to, see that, to say that um, it, seems to, it seems to be, I, I didn't have time to show you now, but, um, well, maybe, uh, and then, here time now. okay, and I will take my time too. Um, what which is interesting about, about connectivity is that um, it seems that uh, Romans uh, from the, try to organize all of this territory from the outside of the peninsula Iberica, and for that reason, all of the most uh, important cities were uh, located in the outside of, uh, of the peninsula. And it is related, I don't have a lot of time because I want to, to talk about transport, um, but the idea is that uh, using this uh, this network, uh, we also can model uh, some time of some kind of transport cost. We know from from history historical sources that uh, maritime cities or maritime territories were always more well uh, economically uh, well connected to other territories because uh, we assume that uh, transport costs by sea were cheaper than by by inland. But the idea I'm going to to pass a little bit quick. Uh, the idea is that uh, we can model this kind of uh, we, we can model this uh, exp these travel expenses from each of uh, from each time period using uh, the relief. <laughs> the idea is that uh, in this this kind of system we can ask uh, to find the most quicker or the most economical uh, route between two points. In that case, this is the shortest path between two points, which is ob obviously the shortest one. But when you analyze what is the most economical way to move one product from one place to another, you can see uh, the differences in that case because it was by sea. And we can create these kind of maps about uh, transport costs from each uh, other time of, from each time period. This, this, all of these are from Roman times from different zones, from different places. You, here you can see in the same scale, you can see the differences between uh, the movement of products from one point in the, uh, in the coast and, and, and in the inland of the territories. But even, even they are short, uh, short territories, um, you can see some patterns of communication. For example, for Merida, it's clear uh, the two main roads, it was, one was uh, to Lisbon and another one was uh, to the south. And obviously we can compare them with uh, the political situation, the political uh, roles of the cities or of the, produ the productive areas. And, um, we can do that the same with the size of the cities and then with, or we can compare them with the distribution of, set of certain products. Um, this is the production of one kind of, uh, of pottery uh, in, the, in, in the center of Spain and, and you can see uh, the, which kind of distribution and we can compare them with the production of uh, olive oil amphoras from the south of Spain and the, and the distribution around, around the peninsula. And but just to conclude, I can say the idea of this project is, uh, is uh, to begin to work or to work with quantified data. Uh, that allows uh, the low, uh, allow us uh, to make some kind of statistical uh, comparisons or analysis between different kinds of information and to try to analyze how these, pe these territories were organized over different time of periods. Thank you.